how to train your face in 2022 and opening up about the story about what happened to me when I used skincare from a brand that I knew that I shouldn't have that burned off my face and what I happened to be using at the time that I credit for helping me still have a semi-functioning stratum corneum, aka the outermost layer of your epidermis. Everyone seems to be making New Year's goals and I feel like because we've been in the middle of a panorama for the past two years, a lot of goals have gone out the window and I've been reading the comments and I see you posting about your goals, both for your skin, your overall health and wellness, your overall happiness, financial, like some of the goals you've posted are really impressive. And one of them actually revolves around using skincare for beginners who want a sensorial experience. Maybe they're coming from like, you know, the department stores, but they're looking for something that's amazing, but that actually has ingredients that works. Now, I do have to tell you a story of how I started testing this before it was launched. This is from Ula Henriksen. This is their strength trainer peptide boost moisturizer. We're working with them on this video because they actually launched this yesterday, which is January 5th. And I had the chance to try it beforehand back when this happened to me. Well, here we are. Um, you can actually see there is a red line <laughs> as to where this was applied to my skin. So if you do remember, back to the end of 2021, I was trying out some skincare products and talking about the ones that have been in my cabinets for a little too long, talking about the necessity of cleaning up my space, which by the way, I did. I organized it, I feel so good about it, and now I just have to commit to keeping it that way. But that's a story for another day. I pulled out this goopy product that is probably expired, but it burned my face the first time I used it. And I um, decided to put it on and see if my skin barrier had been strengthened or what happened and lo and behold it burned my face again it left this red ring around the entire outside of my face and i thought it would go away after a day or so i have erythema and dermatographia so i was like okay this should go away fairly quickly but it actually stayed there for like a day and a half and that's when i realized something's wrong like i burnt something here this isn't just temporary flushing now at the time these are some of the things that i was using and i ended up basically going back to basics i wanted to heal my damaged skin barrier and what is the first thing that you're supposed to do when your skin barrier is damaged you go back to basics go back to a simple sunscreen a simple cleanser simple moisturizer like things to keep it calm we do love serums we love vitamin c we love all the fancies and all the extras but a lot of those things can trigger skin especially if it's already irritated it's more prone to being reactive. So just keeping it simple is the best thing to do. And if you're trying to train your face for 2022, haha, that rhymes. Look at me, I'm so poetic. But if you're trying to train your face for the new year to be lifted, to be firm, to be glowy, there are some things that I would recommend that also fall in line to literally what happened to me. So the first thing I did was of course making sure that I cleanse. The cleanser that I was using at the time is this one from Dr. Sam. This is her flawless cleanser. It's amazing. But this is for, I would say adults who still break out, who love luxury when it comes to skincare. The Silk Shake was also something I was using on my body, but I will not lie, I was kind of putting it on my face from time to time. But for me, the cleanser wasn't as important as long as it wasn't something that was stripping or damaging my skin. I do love things like a face reality cleanser. There's a mandelic acid one I was using, but that's literally an acid and I had just burned off my face. So I was like, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> I basically stopped using all of my serums and this is what I was testing out. So again, this is from Ula Henriksen and it just launched, but I did get some early access to it. And I was using this on my face and I was like, wait, oh my God. This is like floral skin loving pudding for your face. And Ula Henriksen always has had this brand. It was basically made by a guy who was an esthetician. He used to do these treatments on celebrities and he would actually ride his bike to his little skincare clinic. And he started formulating products, which is how the line was created. And they're known for their vitamin C that smells like an orange creamsicle. They're known for a lot of scented things and like their cool plunge mask, a lot of fun things. There are some products that I don't like, but when they launched this, it was my first time kind of seeing a moisturizer of this caliber from them. They have this Bakuchia moisturizer that I really like, but this was like the last moisturizer or sleeping cream that they launched that my skin really loved. So this is what I was already testing and it does have some fragrancing ingredients. Again, it does smell like a nice garden. It smells like the hope and optimism I have for this next 12 months. But this also has peptides. This has a bunch of amino acids. This has ceramides in it. And this basically has all of these nourishing skin loving ingredients that can actually strengthen your skin's moisture barrier or basically your lipid barrier, that barrier that keeps our skin waterproof and protects us from the rest of the world. And when you do have a damaged skin barrier, a lot of times you're prone to irritation, to redness, to stinging. Or if you did strip off your skin's barrier, that can happen as well. <laughs> so based on the ingredients, I was a little bit initially worried about some of the fragrance ingredients in here. It's not overpowering and it's not a lot, but I was like, ooh, is this really the 
best choice for me. But I continued using it, and even on first application, it makes the face look glowy, it makes the face look smooth, and it really does visibly hydrate. But it helped to calm down the redness on the first day that I used it. And then by about day three, all of that redness was gone. So this is about five days after the initial um, uh, microfoliation experience that was just, you know, a nightmare, a disaster. <laughs> they do say this has collagen in here, but it is a vegan collagen, and they specifically say it deeply hydrates, it improves skin strength, firmness, and elasticity with vegan peptides, ceramides, and collagen. And it's basically this hydrating facial moisturizer that's supposed to strength train your skin to have a healthier skin barrier. And while I was initially excited about it, and I was like, yeah, it smells nice, I was really impressed with the way that it took down this redness and really helped to reset my face. Now, at the time, I was also using the New Face. The New Face is something that I literally use at least once a week. I've been doing this for about two years, and I really love it. I credit it with giving me kind of this chisel that I have kind of underneath my um, cheeks here. I don't use it as much up here as I could, but that's something I'll probably start doing more in uh, 2022. But this was also something that has like a moisturizer or boosters to it. And I stopped using those boosters because I didn't want them to irritate my skin. And again, it was about taking it back to basics. So I took those serums out of my routine for a week or two. Now, if you are trying to, you know, train your face to lift and stimulate, you do need to use something that conducts electricity. And although these are not meant to use together, I actually found that I could use this new face during the time that my skin was irritated and this was kind of helping heal it back up. And the whole reason is because the new face shoots a microcurrents of electricity into the skin. It's a microcurrent device and it's supposed to help increase ATP, adenosine triphosphate inside of your skin. Um, a lot of what it does is stimulate that muscle to kind of help tighten and lift. And um, this is something that, again, you don't have to use it with specific ingredients as long as you have something that conducts with it. So this is something I continued to do. And for those who are looking at 2022 and you're like, okay, I need something basic but effective and I come from this world of department store skincare or from natural skincare and I want to use something that is effective and actually works but that's fun to do, I would literally recommend these things. A cleanser, a good strength training, a barrier boosting moisturizer, and if you have the money and the interest in trying it, some sort of a lifting tool. Now this goes without saying, but you also know that SPF is your BFF. Now at the time that this was happening, I was using the Make Prem sunscreen as well as the Apostrophe one. The Apostrophe one is a prescription and the Make Prem is a Korean one. Both of them have these chemical slash organic ingredients, and those can cause redness and stinging in some people. And I do wonder if the reason that that redness and irritation from that goopy product lasted so long was because I put a chemical sunscreen on after using it, um, because I, I felt the sunscreen burning, which normally sunscreens, even if they're chemical, don't burn for me unless I put them over a pimple. So for that week, I did switch to a mineral sunscreen. You know that SPF is your BFF, but especially if you're trying to strength train your skin, get it to be its healthiest and to really support your skin's barrier, a mineral sunscreen is really good because it's less likely to cause irritation. Regardless of whether you use inorganic slash mineral or chemical slash physical, you just want to use a sunscreen that works for you. And this is the one that I used. It's from Dermalogica. It is their invisible physical defense. This is physical, but this also has lavender oil. So again, I don't hate fragrances in my skincare. Fragrances work for me sometimes. These both really work for me and they do have slight amounts of fragrance, but for someone who's more sensitive, I do want to make sure that's clear. If you like are the type of person where like even water burns your face, I wouldn't recommend this. Even though it's mineral, it does have lavender in it. You want to get something that is completely fragrance free. But for those who are coming from the traditional world, world of using like a 10 step skincare routine or feeling overwhelmed. Like who used to walk into like Nordstrom or Macy's and you would look down all the aisles or you would even look at Sephora and you're like, I don't even know where to start. There's men on that wall and women on this wall and a whole bunch of perfumes, uh, skincare, skincare. Okay. Here's an entire wall of it. It feels overwhelming. And then you purchase something and you spend like 50 or $60 on it. You take it home. It doesn't work with whatever else is already in your routine. And you end up breaking out more or your skin gets red and you burn yourself and it's starts getting irritated and peeling. And then you're like, well, freaking fudge muffins, even my sunscreen hurts now, what am I supposed to do? Again, to avoid all of that, we bring it back to basics. And if there are just three easy steps in a routine, it's a good cleanser. It is a good moisturizer that helps nourish your skin with the things that your skin already creates, such as ceramides. They're produced naturally by your skin, same with amino acids. And we're just giving those topically. And then sunscreen, which unfortunately our skin doesn't produce, but technically the outer layer of dead skin cells, the stratum corneum could be considered considered slight sun protection, not really, but did you know that naturally human skin has an SPF of like three to five? And if you have a black melanated skin, it could be as high as 10 to 13. Doesn't mean it protects you or gives you an excuse to go sun tanning uh, because SPF is only how long you can stay in the sun before substantial damage, but still fun fact. And if you didn't know, 
now you know. But that is what you would want to do. And if you are trying to strength train your skin, kind of the way you would train your muscles in a gym, again, make sure that you're not stripping that barrier, but that you're removing things properly. Make sure that you're using a moisturizer that gives your skin what it's already trying to create. Consider a device such as the New Face. There are some other ones like LED that might work for some people. It depends on what you're trying to do. If you're looking for lifting, these two have been best friends in my bathroom. And then of course, SPF is your BFF and don't forget it. One of the other things that I think is a really good New Year's goal is for people to get into the habit of applying their sunscreen. I feel like we're at the point now where we all know it's essential, but sometimes forming those habits is still difficult. And if there's something I could kind of endow upon you, it's that if you struggle with applying your sunscreen at night, put your sunscreen on top of your phone. So that way you literally have to put your sunscreen to the side before you get your phone in the morning and that will remind you to apply. Or for me, I do reapply my sunscreen throughout the day and for the longest time I struggled to do that. But the best thing for me was actually keeping my sunscreen by my lunch, by my food, by my forks and my knives and my chopsticks. And the reason why is because every single time I would be having a meal about three times a day, I would reapply my sunscreen for breakfast when I wake up, for lunch a little bit around 11 or 12, and then four or 5 p.m. kind of at the end of the day. And that helped me to kind of get into this habit of reapplying because I attached it to something else that I already did. And if you're trying to build good habits, if you're trying to train your skin, you also have to work to train your mind into understanding the psychology of human nature and how we build routines and how we build routines that work for us and then making sure that we have the products that are going to do the heavy lifting and the work too. Again, I do want to say thank you to Ula Henriksen for even letting me try this early. This is such a fun product. And if you want something that really makes your skin feel amazing, but that also feels fun to use and that has those nourishing ingredients that help to brighten, that help to lift, but that also give your skin what your skin is naturally producing, such as some of these ceramides and amino acids, this is it. Again, if you do have a sensitivity to fragrance, be aware that this does have fragrance in it. And I get it. Like every single time someone's like, oh, I was using a product, you know, that hasn't launched yet. And it like worked on my skin. People get skeptical and I get it. I would get skeptical too, right? I'm like watching this YouTube video. I'm like, really? Did that really happen to you? And I was thinking like, should I do a video on like how Gwyneth Paltrow destroyed my skin and like what actually worked and just not talk about the product because it hasn't launched yet. And then I was like, that's not fair. And that's not accurate to what happened. So yeah, I got early access to this and it took down the redness in my face and I feel lifted and glowy and it works and it makes me feel like I have hope for 2022 because it smells like the antithesis of the burning sewer sludge that the last two years have been. <laughs> If you're interested, this is available at ulahenriksen.com. They also have it in some stores and I'll make sure to leave the links right there. But I also want you to remember to reapply that SPF, always be beautiful both inside and out. And I cannot wait to see you and your beautifully hydrated faces in this next video. <laughs> You know, I don't know why I keep on letting goopy stuff get on my face and just destroy it. My, my face has been going through it recently, but you know what? At least we know how to bring it back into action, baby. And do you see I have a couple breakouts that are still left over? She's healing. She's healing emotionally, physically, spiritually, in all of the ways. She's also got a new desk. Are you so excited? I'm so excited. Okay, this video is over. Thank you, babies. Mwah. Goodbye.